On the news, Minister of Information rejects Lecky panel report, says findings riddled with inconsistencies. Lawmaker blames poor funding for army's struggle to defeat insurgents. And CBN retains all parameters, holds interest rate at 11.5%. We're glad to have you join us for news now. I am Fola Shadi Ogrindi. Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed has announced that the federal government cannot accept the hashtag NSAS report by the Lagos State Judicial Panel of Inquiry, claiming the report is riddled with errors and inconsistencies. Mohammed made a claim while addressing a news conference in Abuja, the nation's capital, on Tuesday. He also described the report of the panel circulating online as fake. Reacting to the alleged shooting at the Lekki Toll Gate on October 20, 2020, the minister maintained that the government believes and insists that there was no massacre. The judicial panel set on to investigate an incident as submitted in court laden with allegations. The same allegations it was set up to investigate before this. Instead of sitting for all of one year, the panel would have just compiled social media changed by the moonlight on the incident and submitted, saving taxpayers' funds and everyone's time. That report is nothing but the trial for fake news and intimidation of the silent majority by for us to change our stand, I well investigated the report of the incident that means all required standards and we will stand every scrutiny in what we produce and presented to the public. The report in circulation does not meet those requirements. Public opinion by Nigerians on the events of October 20, 2020 has continued to run along parallel lines. While it took one year for the Lagos Judicial Panel of Inquiry to submit its report, uh, some analysts have said that um, the report should be looked into deeper. Earlier, I spoke to political affairs analyst Nelson Ekujimi, and I began by asking him his views on the Lagos panel report on the alleged killings of hashtag NSAS protesters at the Lekito Plaza. The conclusion of that report is inconsistent with the evidences adduced at the panel. That report is based merely on ESC that cannot be substantiated with, with fact. I tell you, I was at that panel for one year as an observer, and I was writing reports, and not one incident of the Lekki Toge shooting was established. All we continue to hear are the petitioners alleging that, oh, they killed my person. And when they are asked to substantiate with a medical report, a police report, or an autopsy on cause of death, the petitioners come out and say, oh, we have buried him. Uh, we took him to my village. Uh, we, we buried him there. And for me, the report, if the panel can sit for one whole year, and at the end of one year, the panel has come up with findings that is based on presumptions, then that panel has has done a great injustice, a great disservice to Nigerians. That, that panel report from its content is not in tandem with facts. The panel report from its content is more about ESA, is more about a preconceived conclusion, not based on the evidence of fact, you know, tendered before the panel. I'm thoroughly disappointed that a panel that was given the freedom 
you know, to do its work with all available resources, you know, to ensure that uh, a diligent uh, job is done, can come out at the end of the day, you know, to be giving us support that is based on presumption. Now, we've had cases where stray bullets killed someone either around uh, the surrounding area or even miles away. So are you trying to say that uh, there was no way uh, that the shooting by the soldiers could have killed anyone at that location on October 20, 2020? Well, the truth of the matter is that I have stated it repeatedly in my public engagement. I was not present at the Lekki Gate on the 20th of October, but we saw footages of personnel of the Nigerian Army shooting into the air. And that was corroborated by the BBC reporter who said she was an eyewitness. She confirmed that his, his Army personnel, the men in military gear, were shooting into the air. So for me, it would be full addy for me to say uh, nobody was killed or somebody was killed. Mine is that if anybody uh, is saying my person, my brother, my sister was killed, it is left for that petitioner to substantiate it with facts. But from the proceedings of the panel uh, in October 2022, October 18, 2021, not one case was established. It was more of uh, they told us that uh, they have carried the body. Well, I have buried it. Let me even tell you one, one uh, ludicrous uh, for that was political affairs analyst Nelson Ekojimi speaking on the details of the Lagos Judicial Panel of Inquiry Report. Well, to speak more on the findings of the hashtag NSAS Lagos Judicial Panel of Inquiry, I'm joined now by political affairs analyst Achike Chude. Uh, many thanks for joining us on News Now. Now, the major argument against the Lagos Judicial Panel report is that the panel was silent on the family members of those reportedly killed. Uh, what do you make of this? Yes, well, um, uh, uh, obviously, uh, there are a few things, um, you know, a few questions that uh, need to be asked. Uh, but uh, that aspect of uh, the report doesn't in any way uh, vitiate uh, the good work that the, that the panel did. Uh, do not uh, forget again that um, uh, this was happening in the midst of uh, so much fear. The army had gone to the Lucky Toll Gate and committed an atrocity, shot like bullets. And don't forget the arguments, first of all. At the initial stage, we must not forget the various lies that characterized what happened at the Lucky Toll Gate. The governor of Lagos State or the government of Lagos State claimed absolute ignorance of what happened at Lucky Toll Gate. The governor said he was not aware of what happened. He was not aware of the presence of soldiers or, you know, how the soldiers got there. Nobody invited the soldiers. Don't forget that, uh, you know, until the military authorities came out and said, look, you were the one. It was Lagos State government that invited us to the Lucky Nakito gates. So that's line number one. Number two was the soldiers came. When, when, when the soldiers came, they said they only shot uh, rubber bullets. Uh, you know, uh, to that Saturday, they themselves had denied that they were there. They said they, they were not there at the initial stage. The letter, they admitted that they were there, but they actually fired like bullets. And eventually, you know, when it became very clear that that light could not hold, they said, well, they also came with live bullets. And so you cannot come with live bullets and not use the live bullets. So that, that is lie number three. And so many other lies that were told by the authorities uh, in, at the Lekki Toll Gate. So... Okay, Mr. Ashike, if, the, the if, Minister if of Information no of also family, questioned um, yeah. some of the names are listed as casualties. Uh, he said some of the names with just first names could be fictitious. Uh, do you think this concern is valid? Well, if you look at it, you know, you might, you might say, yes, uh, you, you know, it could be valid. But there was a reason for that. <laughs> there was fear. People were scared. Don't forget that the Nigerian army had gone and the police, you know, had gone to the Lekki Toll Gate and committed atrocities and shot people because they were given that instruction. So how are you, how are people now going to, want to come out and, and, and reveal the fact that they were there and give their full identity. At the initial stage, there was, there was fear, and so people were doing everything they could not to be identified as even being there in the first place. 
So one would understand the fear because this is an army. I mean, the, the, the Minister of Information has been talking about uh, the engagement of uh, the security forces in Nigeria with 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 with, uh, uh, with Nigerians, that they respect the, the human rights of Nigerians and all that, and they don't harass Nigerians. But we, we saw what happened with uh, the uh, Islamic movement of Nigeria. Over 350 were killed in one day, and that was established by the panel of inquiry set up by the Kaduna uh, State, State, State uh, Governor. We have seen what happened with the raids in the houses of uh, judges in this country. So we have, you know, a security force in this country that acts in ways and manners that are beyond its its scope, its 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 uh, scope, uh, its, uh, its uh, scope of engagement. So people were were worried, people were scared, and so you have to understand. But don't forget that the panel said they visited hospitals. So for people who are saying, and they also they also were commending the hospitals that were involved in the treatment of some of the victims. And these hospitals were named. So it's not as if everything that was done was done in anonymity. They were commending the hospitals and say that some of these hospitals who treated these people free of charge deserve to be commended. Indeed, but I'm sorry to cut you short here, but it's this much you can take on the matter. But uh, political affairs analyst, Achi Kechide, many thanks for your contributions. And now to security, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Army, Ali Indeme, has once again called for an improved budgetary allocation for the Nigerian Army. Indeme made this call after presenting the report of his committee to the Senate Committee on Appropriations, led by Senator Barao Jibrin in Abuja. Indeme reiterated that the military needs more funding and equipment to effectively combat the raging insecurity in Nigeria, adding that underfunding of the military is responsible for the persistent insecurity challenges in the country. Because of the situation we find ourselves in this country these days, where the army is drafted into unconventional war everywhere in 32 states, there is the need to really properly fund them. And therefore, there is an increase, humongous increase in their overhead, personnel, no regular allowances as they call it. But the capital aspect of it, Mr. Chairman, is grossly inadequate. No matter what you do, if they don't have the arms ammunition, then the war cannot be effectively prosecuted. So in summary, we are here to ask for increase in the capital component of the Nigerian army so that they will have the necessary resources and tools to prosecute the war that is, they, they, they are engaged on conventional war everywhere. You are doing your oversight properly. We, you make pronouncements wherever you find out there are something going on within the army. And uh, you also moving around. Even your report you know, speaks for itself, you know, asking for more funds to be uh, given to the, the uh, army in order to uh, make them put in the best place, best position to perform their uh, strategy function properly. Uh, so you should, we urge you to continue this trajectory. We know you, you know, for that, and we are sure you will not relent on your effort to make sure that Nigeria Army becomes the best army in Africa. The Vigilante Group of Nigeria said that signing the Bill for National Community Policing and Vigilante Protection Corps into law would mainstream community policing and the nation's security architecture. The Commandant General of the group, Navi, Navy Captain Uma Bakuri, gave the assurance of, at a press briefing in Abuja, where he urged President Muhammad Buhari to assent to the bill. Bakuri explained that the document is a piece of legislation that confirms strongly to global norms and standards and would give the VGN members greater room for participation in fight against insecurity. From the northeast and northwest, where Boko Haram terrorists kidnapping and cutting road stealing is common. To the North Central, with kidnapping and banditry, South-South, South-East and South-West, where kidnappings, street gangster, cultism, and other forms of criminality is prevalent. The vigilante group has consistently played a complementary role and provided the much needed intelligence backbone to the police and the Nigerian armed forces. VGN personnel can serve as an important component of first line of defense when given the opportunity. We are in every border town and villages 
assisting the custom and immigration agencies. We are also in every village, hamlet, and cities where drugs are cultivated and sold, assisting NDLA with useful and reliable information. Without our men, NDLA cannot enter some uh, places. Moving on, the Society of Nigerian Artists, SNA, has urged visual artists in the country to endeavor to get health insurance in a bid to avoid an unexpected health crisis in the future. The group made a call during the flag off of the 2021 SNA week themed ensuring a healthier future in a creative world in Lagos. Stakeholders at the event emphasize the importance of healthcare insurance, adding that every artist needs his physical and mental well-being intact in order to impact their creativity and in extension live a healthy and long life. Not in any form of paid employment or under any health or social scheme. So this has left majority of artists largely unprepared when the unexpected happens. So it can, it therefore can't be more timely and important for the issue of health insurance among artists to be brought to the fore. And um, to the artists now, I would like to enjoin you to embrace yourselves, the numerous programs the insurance industry has put in place, most especially the health package as it's only when one is healthy and in good spirits, your creative ability can be brought to the fore. It is in this part of the world that we look, we pray for everything, whereas we rather take initiative, take actions that can actually help us to secure the, 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 uh, our future, rather than just leaving everything over to God to take care. Because, I mean, as we all know, heaven helps those who help themselves. So the, the need for members to realize this and do the needful is uh, 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 cannot be overemphasized. So I want to implore everyone and join them to make sure that they subscribe to it. And uh, also the part of the insurance company too, to, I mean, it's easy to, to collect, to pay, I mean, to collect premium. But when it's time to actually, you know, uh, 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 pay uh, uh, for, I mean, for whoever that's uh, due for it, this should be done promptly because that is very, very important. Well, we'll take a break here, but still to come, Lewandowski outshines Messi to retain Golden Player Award. Our details of that story and more right after this break. Welcome back. Now here is a recap of our top stories tonight. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has announced that the federal government cannot accept the hashtag NSAS report by the Lagos State Judicial Panel of Inquiry, claiming the report is riddled with errors and inconsistencies. Mohammed made this known while addressing a news conference in Abuja, the nation's capital, on Tuesday. He also described the report of the panel circulating online as fake. Wilsa Tobi, that chairman of the Senate Committee on the Army, Ali Ndume, has once again called for an improved budgetary allocation for the Nigerian Army. Ndume reiterated that the military needs more funding and equipment to effectively combat the raging insecurity in Nigeria, adding that underfunding of the military is responsible for the persistent insecurity challenges in the country. But in case you missed any of our news bulletin or for more updates, do log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Google Plus at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we are TV360 Online. Nigeria on Monday recorded 36 fresh samples of COVID-19 infection 
According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, the cases were reported in seven states and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. Lagos topped the infection chart with 21 cases, followed by Kano and FCT, with four and three cases respectively. The NCDC also disclosed no fatalities were recorded on Monday, maintaining the casualty figure at 2,974. In total, Nigeria now has 213,625 confirmed cases of COVID-19, with 206,778 recoveries. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, SDC, says the Delta variant continues to be the dominant strain of coronavirus in the country. NCDC Director General Ifedayo Adetifa, who was represented by Yahaya Disu, Head of Risk Communication, said this on Monday at the bi-weekly national briefing on COVID-19 in Abuja. The NCDC DG added that the Delta variant has overwhelmingly dominated the isolation centers in the country. Adetifa added that countries in Europe have started to reintroduce restrictions and some have resulted in national demonstrations and unrest. Oh, we'll take another break here and return with more stories and business. Do stay with us. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the Construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amount funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the Go To app. If you want to know how our Commonwealth is being expanded by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Welcome to Business News. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has voted unanimously to retain the benchmark interest rate at 11.5% while keeping all other monetary parameters constant. This was disclosed by the CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele while reading the communique at the end of the 282nd Monetary Policy Committee meeting on Tuesday. Emefiele explained that the committee's policy over the previous months has begun to show results owing to the 4.03% growth in real GDP. GDP and the sixth consecutive monthly decline in headline inflation. The governor maintained that the continued moderation in the headline inflation can be attributed to a marginal decline in the food and core components of the inflation index in October 2021. MPC believes that the existing monetary policy stance has supported the growth recovery and should be allowed to continue for a little longer for consolidation to achieve the NPC's mandate of price stability that is conducive to growth. The committee also feels that a whole stance will enable it carefully appraise the implications of unfolding global development around policy tapering and normalization by the advanced economies. In summary, NPC voted to, one, retain the NPR by 11.5 to at 11.5%, retain the asymmetric corridor of plus 100 and minus 700 business points around the NPR. Three, retain the CRR at 27.5% and retain liquidity ratio at 30%. We we'll take a break here and return with a review of the stock market.
Nigerian stock slightly declined on Tuesday as the benchmark index fell 0.01%, but the loss was powerful enough to cancel the gains recorded at the session before. The pullback means all the five sector indexes tracked by the bulls shared value, with the banking stocks more pressure than the rest. Apparently, the all share index closed at 43,255 basis points, while the market capitalization at the close of trading today stood at 22.576 trillion naira. The bright spot for today's trade could be found in market breadth, an indicator of investors' attitude towards trade, which closed on a positive note with 19 gainers reported compared to 15 laggards. On the losers list, UPDC, PLC, and NEM, two heavyweight equities championed the stocks that triggered today's pullback. On the flip side, as our gainers list for today, Oniflower maintained previous day gaining streak, still holding its position on the gainers counter. It was the first on our gainers list today. However, today it's seconded by University Press PLC. Uh, our market summary sees a total volume of 217 million units of shares valued at 2 billion naira, exchanging and in 4,158 deals. Now, the market ending in the negative today is beginning to stoke fears as to when lasting buoyancy will return to the market because right now stability is very far from the NGX. On our global scene today, the FTSE, the Dow Jones, and the Nikkei, they are all in the positive territory. FTSE snapped a four-day losing streak driven by gains in heavyweight mining and financial stocks. Dow Jones, although in the positive territory, it was lower early today after tech stocks sold off sharply on Monday as President Joe Biden picked Jerome Powell as Fed chairman for a second term. In the, in the same vein, Japan stocks Nikkei closed in the positive territory, recording a 0.09% increase. That's all on Stock Market Review. But we take a break now. When we come back, we'll join Falashade Ogunride for the rest in the news. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the South Gita Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. G360, dissecting the issues. On the foreign scene, Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed says it will lead its troops from the battlefront as a year-long conflict moves closer to the capital, Addis Ababa. The statement by the 45-year-old Prime Minister, who is also a former soldier, did not say where exactly it will go. Abiy's comments came as the Tigray People's Liberation Front rebel group continued to press towards Addis Ababa. Tens of thousands of people are estimated to have been killed as Ethiopian and allied forces fight against forces from the country northern Tigray region, which dominated the national government before Abiy Hamid took office. Well, up next is Entertainment Report to News Now. Black Mirror by Obi Emeloye has gotten an award nomination at the 2021 British Urban Film Festival. Announcing the nomination, it revealed that the film will compete for the Best Feature Film category in the festival, which will run from December 4th to 10th, 2021. And awards will be given across the official selection, including for Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Feature, Best Short, and Best Documentary. The BAF nomination joins the increasing list of international recognition that Black Mirror has gotten since its trailer release in August. Starring Osi Ukeje in the lead role, Black Mo follows Chinda, a renowned Lagos-based actor, living in London who must go to the extreme length to stop a dark secret from ruining his life. 
Antoine Fowler, also known as Big TJ, has passed away. Two years ago, the hilarious video of him asking his mom where are we are about to eat at went viral, making him an internet sensation. He suffered a rare immune deficiency disorder, and Big TJ was diagnosed with a rare condition in July 2015, a few days after his first birthday, and has undergone over 25 surgeries. As of the time of his death, the video had so far garnered over 24 million views and a further 240,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. And that is all that we have for you in the entertainment segment of News Now. And now to sports. Bayern Munich striker Robert Lewandowski has been awarded the 2021 Golden Player at Toto Sport, retaining the trophy he won last year. Lewandowski, aged 33, was voted the best over 21 player in Europe ahead of Chelsea's Johino and Paris Saint-Germain's Lionel Messi. Although his trophy collection wasn't as full as 2020 when he swept the board by winning every competition at club level, Lewandowski has still proven himself as the best attacker in the world over the last year. His 50 goals in 2021 is 13 more than any other player in Europe major leagues and came from only uh, 38 appearances. Anita Raponani is bulletin. Many thanks for watching. I am Fola Shadi. Well, green day. Bye for now.